Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Heat Wave. 32 teams, 32 days, and we are breaking down every single fantasy relevant player on each team for the upcoming 2022 season. Today, we are focusing on the Philadelphia Eagles, uh, the favorite in the in the NFC East. Uh, I am your host, the fantasy plug, Tim Petropolis, editor in chief um, of BrotoFantasy.com and the Fantasy Football by Broto app. I am joined by my brother Jason, the true true value king himself and the director of operations at BrotoFantasy.com and the Fantasy Football by Broto app and the Dynasty Don himself, the Fantasy Encyclopedia, Psych Ward, Matt Ward, the uh, all important lead writer at Broto Fantasy. Speaking of lead writer, you can find all of his work, you can find this, everything on the Fantasy Football by Broto app. It is our child. We are nurturing it. We are developing it, and we want you to use it to become your own expert. Every single stat that you're going to hear us use today can be found on the app. It is a toolbox for you. In that toolbox, fantasy player cards, which are fantasy player profiles, which literally give you every single stat you need about a player. Fantasy player grades, usage charts, a start sit tool, a who to draft tool, which is really valuable this time of year, player comps. Uh, consistency charts, game logs, coaching tendencies, podcasts, articles, rankings, waivers. This year we have dynasty rankings for Matt Ward, who in his in his time ranking and in his time at Brodo has been extremely spot on, very valuable rankings. And don't forget the best part of the app, the reason why we brought it to you in the first place, stats. We want you to have every stat, every stat's available, ex- including stats that have given us an advantage over the years. The Broto exclusive stats, true throw value, true target value, true performance value, true adjusted air yards, and true matchup rankings. For me, my most important tool. The app is free because of our patrons over at patreon.com slash Broto Fantasy. Big thank you to our patrons. We love you so much. You keep this ship running. You keep the lights on. If you'd like to support the show, if you'd like to join the community, which is the best community ever, for as little as $3 a month, you get extras like an extra waiver wire show, access to Broto League. Some of those leagues are extremely unique leagues that we're going to be unveiling extremely soon. Um, Proven DFS cash game optimizers, access to cheat sheets, and access to the Discord where you will find the greatest community of football heads in the entire world. Um, We love the Broto fam on Discord. Today we're jumping into the Eagles, the offensive outlook for the Eagles. It's the same uh, coaching staff that we are used to, so... You know, um, definitely nothing, not too much of an offensive adjustment. Um, second year for Nick Sirianni, uh, second year for offensive Shane Steichen, uh, 12, 12th in points per game last year. Now, that's a little misleading because this was a tale of two halves for the Eagles. You had the rookie head coach, you had the rookie offensive coordinator. They had a plan in place that didn't necessarily fit Jalen Hurts. Once the plan started fitting Jalen Hurts better, all of a sudden, you have your you have your success. And some of that success was this is the team that led the league in run percentage. Um, they rank first on the PFF O-line rankings, so an extremely important stat there, the best offensive line going into the um, season. And a fun fact, their tight end coach is named Jason Michael. So, uh, you know, for whatever that's, that's worth. Um, the additions on this team, A.J. Brown. The big addition and Zach Pascal, another wide receiver formerly of the Colts. Uh, they drafted center Cam Jurgens in the second round and subtractions. They didn't lose much. Jordan Howard uh, is their biggest loss. So, with that being said, let's get into Jalen Hurts, one of the big league winning type guys last year, Jalen Hurts. And it's appropriate that we are throwing it to Jason for him because Jason was one of the people banging the drum for Jalen Hurts. Uh, he ranked Jalen Hurts in his top five when everyone had him like ranked QB 12 ish. Uh, last year, he said in multiple drafts that he was not going to draft any quarterbacks. He was going to wait for Jalen Hurts. Jason banged the drum for Jalen Hurts, and he banged it correctly. He was not only a great value where he was picked, but he was the number one most consistent fantasy player in terms of QB1 finishes. He had the most QB1 finishes of any QB in the league. So when you think about that and the fact that you got him in the 12th round last year, a lot of people won who had who – had, uh, Who had him now, though, people know that his ADP is going higher and higher and higher and higher, um, but still a value. And now he gets another weapon. Jason, how are you feeling about Jalen Hurts coming into the year? Yeah, listen, Jalen Hurts is my fucking guy. And 
like you just said, he's still a value. So give me all that value. Like, I don't understand ADPs these days. Jalen Hurts was quarterback five in points per game last year. And like you said, he had more quarterback one finishes than anyone else in the league. And a lot of that had to do with his rush attempts. He led all quarterbacks in attempts, yards, and touchdowns. He ended up with 139 rushes, which is bananas, 784 yards, and 10 rushing touchdowns. The issue when it comes to Jalen Hurts is his throwing ability, of course. He was 32nd in true throw value last year, not an effective arm. And when they started using their running backs more, we did see it take a toll on his fantasy play. The first eight weeks, he had five top five finishes. The last eight weeks, he had three top six finishes. I had to stretch it to six to make it sound a little bit better. Uh, he was definitely more effective in the first half than the second half. But I think that's why we're seeing this dip in ADP. Not like his ADP should be higher and why people are a little bit weary about him. All I know is that they added A.J. Brown, bruh. A.J. Brown and Ryan Tannehill have been the power couple of true throw and true target value for the last three years. And if anyone's going to help Jalen Hurts be more efficient through the air, it's A.J. Brown. And if anyone's going to open up the field more for rushing lanes, for him or Miles Sanders or whoever it is, it's A.J. Brown. So even though Jalen Hurts wasn't, as great as he was last year, he still ended as the quarterback five. And right now he's being drafted behind Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert, Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow, and uh, Dak Prescott. I'm, I will wait all day, all day. And just take Jalen hurts after all of those guys in all of my drafts. Like, unless you're paying up for Josh Allen, who is sitting alone at the top of the QB one throne these days, deservedly. So, I'm waiting for Jalen Hurts. I don't think I need to pay up for Joe Burrow, who you're counting on throwing for 58,000 yards uh, to pay off of his ADP if you think he's going to be top three. Give me Jalen Hurts all day. Uh, Joe Burrow, interesting story that broke today. This will give you a little bit of an idea of when we're recording this. Um, but appendectomy, he's probably not going to play in the preseason. That's probably not going to make a difference, but you're not going to see any Joe Burrow in the preseason. Um, someone that, you know, a, a position that gets taken away by the rushing prowess of Mr. Jalen Hurts is the running backs, the guys who are supposed to be getting those uh, <laughs> those rushing yards. So how are we feeling about this, Matt? Because, look, we have a situation where it's Miles Sanders who, you know, look, a couple of years ago I was all over the Miles Sanders train because he had a great rookie season, and we thought, oh, this is the time that they're going to start feeding him the ball. Then – uh, they didn't do that. Then Nick Sirianni comes in and also did not do that. Um, Miles Sanders, especially because of his athletic profile and his pass catching profile, was not used in the pass game either. So, you know, Miles Sanders was very much a mid range back. Um, and then he's got competition in the backfield Boston Scott, and one guy I know you like a lot, um, Mr. Matt, uh, Kenny Gainwell this year. So, with that being said, how are you looking at these running backs? And yeah, tell us about it because I, I, I'm just I'm I'm pausing right yeah, now. Yeah, I, I you will. Should, you should know. You should know <laughs> that Matt. I was waiting for the we, segue. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I got you. No, but you should know that Matt is when we first. All right, so we have a series. Everything you need to know about on the app, and it's you could pick a player and you give them and everything you need to know about them plus your a, their ADP review. Matt, before anyone else picked any other player. Picked Kenneth Gainwell to write this up on. So that's how you know yeah, like that Kenny number G. one, Matt's the man. Number two, you're about to get some Kenny Gainwell bar. So Matt, uh, what's what, talk to us about this Eagles backfield? We'll, we'll talk about the we'll talk about the lead guy or the, the supposed lead guy first. And and I, I don't want to like detract your supposed great rookie season, but his great rookie season, he was RB 21 in points per game at 13 and a half. And he only had 818 rushing yards and 179 rushing attempts. And he played every game. Um, I, one he, thing that you got to remember though, he, he had 500 <laughs> yards in the air. Sorry. So he had I was, yards, he had uh, so yards this, in the air. now you're ruining my segues. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the upside that he presented was 50 receptions and 500 yards through the air, 509 to be exact. Six total touchdowns. So you saw some upside there in 2019. 2020 comes, only 12 games played, uh, dealt with minor injuries the whole time, but only 28 receptions and 197 yards, 164 rushing attempts. So his rushing volume was on pace um, to be 
higher and he's a very efficient rusher um something that you can see on the app he's been top five in rushing yards over expected um both of the last two seasons top five in rushing yards over expected per attempt so sanders is a really efficient rusher but he doesn't get high rushing volume and then his passing work just disappeared like 26 receptions, 158 yards last season, zero touchdowns. And he doesn't seem to be somebody that they trust in those, for lack of a better term, high pressure situations. Because as you said, like the Eagles were the number one rushing offense. I mean, 32.1 rush attempts per game. So led the league in that. And he only had a 50.6% opportunity share. Regardless, remove the games that he missed. When he was on the field, he only got a touch on half the plays. So first down, they didn't use him. Second down, they didn't use him. And then every once in a while, you'd see a check down or an early rush attempt. In the 20, they didn't use him. Um, So it's really, really hard to project Miles Sanders having anything of a different role than that. And if he's not going to catch passes and isn't going to get a Najee Harris level of 323 rush attempts in a season, then that rushing efficiency doesn't matter. Somebody that does catch passes on that offense though, and a running back that I really like, especially is cost. And, and I mean like Sanders ADP is, is palpable, but it's also rising because he's in that, he's in that dead zone where people want to play hero running back and get a guy like, okay, this guy has RB one upside. We've seen it before, but we haven't really seen it before. And he doesn't. And I'm not saying that Kenny Gainwell has RB1 upside, but he did have more weeks of RB1 production than Miles Sanders did last season. He had four weeks of RB1 production. He only played 28% of the snaps. So like every single time that Kenny Gainwell touched the ball, he made something happen. Um, And yeah, he did have like a pretty high touchdown ratio, which we don't like like predicting touchdowns. It's impossible to predict touchdowns. It's impossible to predict scoring output. It's touchdowns don't stick from season to season. Good players produce fantasy points kind of without needing to be reliant on touchdowns. And that's what Kenny Gainwell does. Um, he had a 0.636 points per opportunity, excluding touchdown, which ranked sixth amongst all running backs in the NFL um, that had over 120 opportunities. 1.73 yards per route run, which was 11th. fantasy points per opportunity, which was seventh. Like Kenny Gainwell will, you don't even need, he doesn't need the volume that Miles Sanders does to be fantasy relevant. And again, because of his cost being so low and essentially like in, you know, zero handcuff territory, like Gainwell is a really, really good pick. He can give you weekly RB1 production in a flex hole when you don't have to draft him as anything more than a flex. Man, you just legitimately made me seven times more like high on Kenny Gainwell right now because the yo, man, you're spitting like like the fact like the Kenny. really <laughs> it, hit, it hit it hit you over the head when you realized he had more RB one finishes than Miles Sanders did last year, and you were yeah. right like Miles Sanders got the volume on the ground but just didn't get the volume in the air, and that's why you liked Miles Sanders coming out of his rookie season, and now it's not liked it anymore. Kenny Gainwell sleeper. Um, that's, that's two seasons too. So like with Jalen hurts high rushing attempts and like, even if say the Eagles want to pass more, all things indicate that they want to pass more. Well, those are going to go to the guy that they just paid a ridiculous amount of money and traded a first round pick for. And the guy that they selected in the first round last year and a tight end that is top 10 in every metric imaginable. Like it's not, you know, so you need a guy that's highly efficient with pass work. That's Kenny Gainwell out of the backfield. It's crazy because it could be Miles Sanders. It could be. They just and won't it just, let it be. It just isn't. <laughs> yeah, it just yeah, isn't. Like it just uh, isn't. Let's go to tight ends because uh, I'd like to hear from Jason uh, in this. We'll go back and forth. We'll save wide receivers. The most interesting position on this team, in my opinion, uh, for last. Dallas Goddard. Jason, last year, he was up and down. But when he was up, he was up. Uh, finished in the top six of, of tight ends. Uh, so you're happy where you drafted him last year. You're going to get him around there this year. How are you feeling about Dallas Goddard? Um, for me, and I, you know, nothing, I, I don't want to you know, step on your argument, but for me, like, you know how the RB dead zone is like around round four, five, six ish. Like for me, the tight end den- dead zone is like round eight, nine, ten, 10, um, because that's where you're getting guys where it's just like, ah, oh, I got to fill in my tight end. I'm going to, and you're not getting difference makers. Like I feel like Dallas Goddard, he may be your tight end six, but yes, he's going to score, you know, 20 more points than your t- the tight end 14. 
you know, and you could stream maybe something better than that. So, like, I, I, although I do like Dallas Goddard in terms of the other tight ends, I don't think that he's as big of an upgrade to draft him where you're going to have to draft him. So, Jason, how are you feeling about Dallas Goddard? Yeah, I uh, right now I nothing with Dallas Goddard. I'm entirely neutral on where he's going in drafts. Uh, he's the tight end eight off the board right now, which makes sense because he was a tight end seven last year. And he has upside. The big thing that we're going to hear Matt talk about soon is that they added A.J. Brown to this team. And I don't know if that hurts or helps Dallas Goddard yet because it's obvious that having A.J. Brown on the outside will open some things up for Dallas Goddard in the middle of the field. Like, it's just going to happen. A.J. Brown's too good to not get coverage. But then the other issue is that Jalen Hurts threw the ball 432 times last year, which is 21st in the league. So when you bring in a guy who has a 25-plus percent career target share, A.J. Brown, you have Devontae Smith, you have Sanders slash Gainwell, who will get some work out of the backfield. Like, how many targets are left for Dallas Goddard? And last year, Dallas Goddard was super efficient. He was 24th in true target value because Jalen Hurts was not valuable throwing the ball last year, but he finished eighth in points per game. Like he was doing a lot with a little last year, so he can be efficient. But if he's less efficient than he was last year, and if his targets drop even a little bit, then you're looking at someone who, based on true target value, is expected to be the 24th tight end, and he's too talented to end that low. But if he can he turn that into a top eight finish again? I'm not sure. The only way it'll be possible is if A.J. Brown takes up so much coverage on the outside that Dallas Goddard's able to find the end zone 10 times this year. And that could entirely happen. So that's why I'm very neutral on where Dallas Goddard's at right now. I'm not reaching for him. If he's there and I feel like I need a tight end at that point, then maybe I'll take him. I think his ADP is where it should be. Uh, and I honestly, I'm just intrigued to see what he's going to do this year with A.J. Brown on the team. All right, so let's get into these wide receivers now because that speaking of AJ Brown, I mean, this is the most intriguing this is the most intriguing position on this team. I think one of the more pre- intriguing situations in the NFL because you have a brand new number 1. Um AJ Brown, you know AJ Brown has been playing with the true value king himself, Ryan Tannehill, so he's been with a very good quarterback in terms of efficient throws. Uh he's been Towards the top, if not at the top of the true throw value list, true throw value, throw to exclusive stat, which gives a, um, a a number or a, you know, a rating to a quarterback's throw. How much is it worth? How, who is, wh- how much does his throw produce in fantasy? And AJ Brown was playing one of the more efficient guys. So even though he didn't get super targeted, he put up efficient numbers. People say, okay, well, that means he doesn't have to get super targeted because Jalen Hurts is not going to throw as much. I would venture that Jalen Hurts throws a little more this year than you saw last year, but he has two people to feed now because Devontae Smith is on the other side. They also brought in Zach Pascal, who isn't going to be a a fantasy-relevant guy probably, but will be on the field, and Quez Watkins probably still will be on the field. So two other guys who will probably, you know, take something away from the other two guys. But really, we're talking about A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith here. So the question for you is, is there enough room for these guys? Is there a world where both of these guys could be successful? And is that world, a, you know, a, a reasonable world? Matt, talk to me, brother. Yeah, I mean, a- absolutely there is. And, and like I preface, is, is I think the Eagles' number one offensive line, they improved the pass blocking side of that already incredible offensive line. Um, they went out and got AJ Brown. Um, they seem to be venturing towards a direction where they want to be a more pass centric offense. And for better or for worse, I think they also want to test Jalen hurts in that offense because of the abundance of future picks that they have and the ability or the, the quarterback talent rather that we have in this upcoming 2023 class, the potential QB ones that we have multiple um, in this 2023 class. I think the Eagles want to really test Jalen hurts to pass more. So yes, I do think it will be a more pass centric offense with a bit more volume to go around. I also think that that volume will be funneled between three guys. I think Dallas Goddard's the real deal and AJ Brown and Devonte Smith. And to speak to, you know, something kind of positive about Brown in a, in a switched up offense is yes, Tannehill was atop the true value thrown um, or true throw value thrown for several years. And, you know, kind of 
basically told us that like he was a QB one, regardless of the volume. And then he continued to put up those numbers, but he did take a large drop off in that department last season in, in the value of his throws and something that we touched on in the AFC South episode yet. AJ Brown maintained he was 15th in points per game with 15.2. So he was fine, even though Tannehill's true value dropped incredibly. So going into an offense where you have the 24th true throw value quarterback from last season doesn't concern me as much, especially because I am personally projecting a higher volume. So I do think that that volume would support both. And I think AJ Brown is the clear wide receiver one. You can 15.4 points per game, I think is his floor. Um, and, and I think we saw a floor last season from AJ Brown admits the injury and admits Tannehill falling off and admits that offense having to have a completely different look where defenders could now slack off and actually defend the pass because Derrick Henry wasn't in the box. And, you know, so I think AJ Brown will be just fine on a new offense, just fine with a quarterback that doesn't necessarily deliver as valuable as targets. But somebody that I also really like, I think people are sleeping on because we were graced with the generational season that was Jamar Chase and the reception rookie breaking season that was Jalen Waddle. But Devontae Smith is a very good football player. Like it's so slept on as a rookie here and 103 targets had 64 receptions, 916 yards and five touchdowns. That's an excellent rookie season. Like that is everything you want to see from a rookie that you would project a second year breakout from. And I do think that AJ Brown on the opposite side of the field helps him because Devontae Smith did that as the unquestioned number one receiver that you have to cover on that offense. And he, you know, 14.4 yards per target depth. And like, that tells us that, especially with a guy like Jalen Hurts, that tells us that Devonte Smith was just wide open all the time. Like this guy is the real deal when it comes to separating. He's the real deal when it comes to deep threat, his speed and his nuances of acceleration are next to none. Like, yes, Devonte Smith is undersized, but he uses that to his ability because he can just slip through guys and slip around. They like, he's like trying to catch smoke. So somebody that I'm very, very high on. Um, and yeah, Again, like for sticky stats when you're projecting like second year breakouts, he had a air yard share that was ranked sixth in the NFL overall, 38.9% of his total team air yards. That was Devontae Smith. Um, yards per route run ranked 15th, 2.16 yards per route run. Yards per target in the top 25. Yards per reception, top 25. Yards per team pass attempt, top 15. Like <laughs> Devontae Smith is legitimately an alpha receiver stuck in a beta body. And stuck in a beta role. At the moment, as and, well. and now, yes, he, I, I will concede that he's the secondary guy. But man, we have seen time and time again that if an offense can support a wide receiver one, that likely means that it is a high volume passing offense that can support multiple receivers. And because those other options that you mentioned, the Jalen Ragers, the Zach Pascals, the Quest Watkins can't earn more than 8% of the targets on any offense. I, I don't think it's going to be a major concern for those two guys to be able to meet their ex expectations. Jason, how are you feeling about this? Uh, I see you nodding your head over there. Yeah, I entirely concur. I think that the Eagles are going to be like the Bengals this year. Like, you want a piece of that offense, man. You want Jalen Hurts as your quarterback. You want uh, A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith could be Jace, Chase and Higgins light. Uh, Dallas Goddard is probably going to be a better tight end than the Bengals have. The only thing that I don't see coming out of the Eagles like I do the Bengals is the running back game. But at the end of the day, hey. Sanders plus Gainwell is probably going to be equal to Joe Mixon anyway. It's just that it's two people doing it for the Eagles. Um, right. So I, I agree with Matt. I think that A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith will have good seasons. Ah, Jason, we caliente. We caliente. I'm, I'm actually on the on the opposite end of this, which doesn't make me feel good. But I, I, I will say the other, the other thing. <laughs> Um, you know, could it might not be a problem, but could be a problem if Jalen Hurts thought, can't get it together. All that of a sudden, is, the, the back the, he goes back to twenty passes a game. You know, like right. that's an issue because you got, like you said, you, you think Kenny Gainwell, and I think Kenny Gainwell has a shot. Uh, Miles Sanders is gonna get the ball a lot, um, and that leaves like five receptions up yeah, for grabs let's, per uh, let's guy. Be, let's even be like 
you know, play the projection game and, and assume that they funnel their targets, which is what that offense looks like it wants to do because they only really had one receiver last season. So they funnel their targets between three dudes, 420 pass attempts. You could see all three of them getting over 100 targets easily. Goddard, Smith, A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown sits around 150. Devontae around 110. Goddard just over 100. That still leaves... 150 I think Brown Brown be, can get 150 targets. Yeah, That's not that, that crazy. That would be it's his achievable. career high. It's achievable, but it would be career high. It's a, it's a new team. But, it, but that's this, we and again we're I'm I'm projecting an increased volume. Yeah. Right? Obviously, this isn't just based on like you know the the 400. But even in that, I'm saying it's possible if those targets are funneled between three dudes, and then that leaves 70 plus for everyone else, which. Yeah, I mean, I, I could see Kenneth Gainwell catching another 35 passes for another 200 plus yards and a bunch of touchdowns. Like, that's so if, at cost, he's the running back that I like the most out of that backfield based on the efficiency and how they're going to split volume. So, you know, we've seen Sanders in a volume role. Now let's give Kenny a little bit of that volume and, and I like him a little more. All Not right. a, like, no, I you know, you. Yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now. Let's get into our bowl predictions. How about that? Um, Jason, why don't you start us off today with your with your Eagles bowl prediction? What's your bowl you prediction for the know Eagles, the deal. bro? You know the deal, bro. Jalen Hurts, QB1 His overall. His boy. Overall. Ooh, Let's go. Spicy. That's spice. Spicy. Meet the ball. Um, <laughs> so then uh, I'm going to hop in because I already kind of said it. I think A.J. Brown's going to have a career high in targets. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, let's go. Beast is nice correlation. Ball. Good correlation. Yeah, I, both and I, and I'm, I'm, I'm not like, I don't think it's that crazy. Jalen Hurst has really only played a year and a half, right? Like, so it's not, this is his second year leap. Yeah. Like this is his second year. Interesting. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to be a little bit of a party pooper. I'm going to say that neither. A.J. Brown or Devonta Smith end as wide receiver ones. But I'll say this. They both end as wide receiver twos. So I think that they could both have fantasy success in this offense. I just don't see the volume where they both are fantasy stars. But I do see fantasy success in the offense. All right. I feel you there. That is all for us. Um, yeah, that's all for us for today. Uh, Matt. Where could they find you, bro? I got to stop cover. You're going to cover your name every time I tell you to, <laughs> to go. Go ahead. Find me at Psych Ward FF on all social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, even wherever you want to get your fantasy news. I'll be turning it out. Yes, Anaki. Did you, at Brodo did FF you get like Jason. that Canadian out? <laughs> oh, every time. Uh, Brodo FF Tim, Brodo FF Mike, Brodo FF Casanova, at Brodo Fantasy, and at FF by Brodo for the app customer service, things of that nature. We're coming back at you tomorrow. We're going to take command. The command. Peace out. We're going to go ahead and uh, take command. Did you guys, did you, have you guys seen Carson Wentz when he first got traded? No, you asked that last time. Yes, bro. <laughs> just funny video. I Carson, didn't go look it up. <laughs> Carson Wentz, he's on the plane. He just got traded. Like, he looks tired. He's, they, you could tell he's, like, saying something. And, and I guess take command is what they're, like, is their tagline that they've developed. Oh, it was like a promo. Yeah, and he couldn't, like, remember it. So he was just like, uh, you know, uh, yeah, great to be here. So we're going to um, go ahead and uh, take command. <laughs> and he was just like, uh, it was just like the most uninspiring video of all time. Anyway, uh, later. See you tomorrow. Peace out. Nice. Say hey to your mother for me. <laughs>